Hi, welcome to Biostock. Brain Plus is a health tech company focused on the treatment and management of dementia. The Danish company is now raising capital to pursue commercialization in the UK. And joining me in the studio to tell us all about it is the CEO, Kim Bading Christensen. Welcome, Kim. Thank you, Michael. It's nice to have you here. Uh, well, first of all, Kim, uh, could you briefly tell us what is Brain Plus and uh, what is your range of products like? So, yeah, Brain Plus is a health tech company that develops primarily software based products for treating and uh, managing dementia. And one of the primary therapeutic methods that we're working with is something called cognitive stimulation therapy. And this goes in and it treats the primary symptoms of dementia, which is cognitive decline. So mm -hmm. that's when people lose their memory, they lose their ability to focus. Basically, they lose their ability to take care of themselves. And cognitive stimulation therapy, or CST for short, uh, was developed about 20 years ago in, in the UK, in fact, mm -hmm. and has since then been proven again and again in over hundreds of clinical trials. And therefore is the dementia therapy that has the best evidence today in the world. In fact, it is recommended for being given to every person who is diagnosed with dementia in the United Kingdom. It is recommended to be globally implemented by the World Alzheimer's Organization and other policy-making bodies. Mm -hmm. So this is becoming the standard. And um, what we're doing is that we're helping automate that, digitalize it, so we save a lot of time for the therapist. We ensure a very high level of quality with curated content developed by some of the world's leading experts in this field. So this becomes a tool for the therapist when delivering the therapy and the therapy is being delivered in groups. So people come together, they come into the clinic, and the therapist then guides them through a number of structured interactions. So it's an interactive so-called psychosocial therapy. And it works. It consistently improves uh, cognition. You can say consistently it delays cognitive decline by six months. Mm -hmm. It improves communication skills and it improves quality of life for the people who receive the therapy. Mm -hmm. So that's our first product. Is, is helping doing that. And generally, we're helping making it available not only uh, in this setting, but we'll also help make it more available at home mm -hmm. so people can do this at home with their families. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Uh, well, um, in terms of reaching the market, you, you're, you're, uh, uh, first of all, you're trying to reach the UK market. Uh, why the UK specifically for this first uh, market? I would say for three main reasons. First reason being that since UK is where this therapy was invented, it is also where it is the most widely adopted. So there are 6,000 trained therapists in this particular therapy, mm -hmm. and this is the target audience for our first product. So it is actually the biggest market for our first product. Mm -hmm. Not only the fact that UK has a big market, but in, in terms of direct trained therapists who are going to use the product. Um, secondly, and a little bit hand in hand with that is that uh, this in, in the UK, this therapy is recommended for everybody. So there's a top down, mm -hmm. you can say push for, for the product. And then there's a fact that there are all the people on the ground. So we have basically uh, s the things that propel demand in a market like that. Thirdly, the UK is in terms of digital health adoption, more generally, the most mature market in the European Union. Mm -hmm. They have the highest rate of digital health adoption in the national healthcare system. Uh, they have the best, you can say, overall reimbursement possibilities, which means how do we get the healthcare system to actually pay for our product so the patients or the people don't have to pay for it themselves. And there are several good possibilities for that in the UK. Well established. This has been proven by several other digital health companies in other areas, such as mental health. And now we are set to do the same thing within the area of dementia. Mm -hmm. Well, then the obvious follow-up is what is your uh, go-to market strategy to enter the UK? Yeah. So for this, we're working, I would say, with the absolutely leading uh, commercial specialist in the UK called Quiddity Health. They have around 30 other digital health companies that they are helping and have helped enter and scale within the national healthcare system of the UK, including market-leading companies mm. uh, in, other, in other disease areas. And they were actually looking for somebody to do this within mm. dementia. And we did a mutual due diligence and decided that let's, let's do this. Uh, the go-to-market strategy is focusing currently on selling to the NHS trusts. These are the healthcare regions that are responsible for caring for people with dementia. Mm -hmm. um, in some cases, they're also 
uh, doing the diagnosis. So these are medical Mm -hmm. medical regions, which is different from a country like Denmark, where it's municipalities taking care of it, where it's not medical specialists doing it. Mm -hmm. So we're selling to the NHS trusts, uh, initially selling to one, then to many. These trusts are then grouped into larger regions. Mm -hmm. And so the second phase, you can say the second step besides scaling within individual trust contracts, is that we start getting reimbursed and we start making contracts on a regional level. Mm -hmm. And this is also, we're not the first ones doing it, it has been done by other digital health companies in other areas. And when we get to that level of reimbursement, which we see as maybe 18 to 24 a month from now in the UK, then we can reach contract sizes that are in the range of half a million pounds. Mm -hmm. So then it starts becoming really, really attractive. So those are some of the reasons. Uh, well, could you tell us a little bit about the competitive landscape here? Uh, yeah, what are you competing with? Yeah, so we can start by talking about other non-drug therapies mm -hmm. um, because that's the space we're in. In fact, conscious simulation therapy is complementary to drug therapy, mm -hmm. so there's a big opportunity there. Mm -hmm. We can save that for another question. Mm -hmm. um, there are other therapies for dementia, but none of them have the same level of clinical evidence of conscious mm -hmm. simulation therapy. At the moment, we are the leading company in terms of working with the world-leading experts to develop this. Mm. There are some nonprofit organizations and some research organizations that have developed digitalized version of CST. None are commercializing it to the, and none are have worked with it so focused as their primary mission as we do. Mm. Um, so the most competition we're actually facing today is from non-medical mm. products. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of those for people with dementia, things that make them feel better or feel feel good or just something that activates them, but that cannot claim any medical benefits, mm -hmm. which we can with our products. Well, you, you mentioned the, the, the medical therapeutics. Uh, uh, so you're not competing with those. How, how does CST fit in with those, uh, yeah, those pharmaceuticals? So with the pharmaceuticals, it, it fits in in the sense that if you do both contestulation therapy and a drug-based therapy, you will see this is based on studies with the existing class of the, the old class of uh, Alzheimer's drugs. You will see that the overall effect of the drug is enhanced. Mm -hmm. So there will simply be better health outcomes, better effects. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is safe to say that I would say it is very, let's say, plausible that the new disease-modifying drugs that are coming out from companies such as uh, ISI or Lilly, mm -hmm. uh, that, they that we'll see a similar complementary complementa effect. Because what they go in and they, they help remove the protein plaques mm -hmm. from the brain, but they're not going in and, and setting the demand for the brain, which is therapy does, that yeah. is uh, stimulating plasticity, mm -hmm. right? So in that sense, they're highly complementary in terms of the mechanism of mm -hmm. action, you could say. Uh, that's very interesting. We could talk a lot about mechanism of action, but yeah. unfortunately, we don't have time for that. Um, so, uh, what are your what is what are Blame Brain Plus's plans for expanding to other markets in the future? Mm. So, let's say in in the short term, the next couple of years is really UK, UK, UK. Mm -hmm. uh, enter and scale, and our our target is that based largely on UK revenues that will be already market, uh, UK market break even next year, and will be company break even cash flow wise mm -hmm. at the end of 2026. From there, the next big market that we're really eyeing is also the US market. Mm -hmm. That said, we are already also active in Germany, which is a large market. It's just not so mature in terms of CST adoption. So in both Denmark, our home market, UK and Germany, we are integrating our product into the education of all the new therapists, mm -hmm. which means that we're kind of getting them at the source. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's where we're starting in a market like Germany without spending any other effort on commercialization there yet. Uh, so we can really concentrate on first succeeding and scaling in the UK market. Mm -hmm. So that's really what the next two years is all about. On the other side of that, the, the US will be a major focus mm -hmm. as well. Uh, well, speaking of future, uh, maybe you can sort of give us an overview from your perspective of the future of dementia management. I think in the in the future, simply out of necessity, mm -hmm. because the healthcare systems are 
will, if not taken care of, they will start collapsing under the burden, mm -hmm. which is dementia, which is not only the healthcare system itself, it's also the families, mm -hmm. where you have stress, you have burnout, comes at a very big cost to society overall. So it's one of the areas where you can see in countries like the UK, where it's getting highest priority in the healthcare system now, mm -hmm. because the healthcare systems are realizing that if they don't start doing something about it, it will, it will not be sustainable, basically. Mm -hmm. So the future will be one in which people are actually offered something mm -hmm. for managing their dementia, which is not the case today. Mm -hmm. Today there is a big lack of people actually being offered something, and those being offered something is often something that is not medical. Yeah. So that's part of the future is being offered something. I would also envision that everybody's being offered a medical intervention, mm -hmm. either in form of a drug in form of a non-drug therapy, such as contemplation therapy, or a combination of both. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, before I let you go, I have to ask, uh, why is right now the right time uh, for an investor to, to invest? I think now is, is uh, it couldn't possibly be a better risk-reward ratio, I think, mm. uh, than what it is right now for several reasons. One is that ever since we IPO'd and pivoted to focus exclusively on dementia, we have spent the last three years putting a product on the market. We've proven the demand in our home market, Denmark, with strong feedback from the users and the therapists. We have proven that now in a usability study in the UK. We're ready to certify it as a medical device in the UK this year and put it into the largest and most attractive market in Europe this year. So literally about to start scaling the business on, on the revenue side. Um, we have this uh, proven and, and strong team with a, with a great track record. And uh, the market cap is the lowest it has ever been, not due to us not following our objectives and our plans, but simply due to macroeconomic conditions. So from, from, my, from my point of view, it's a great risk reward. Uh, I can't actually make any recommendations, but, but I think in terms of the market cap and where we are maturity-wise, mm -hmm. um, it's an attractive risk reward investment, in my opinion. Well, thanks so much, uh, Kim, for that uh, that great discussion. Uh, uh, you make some compelling arguments, and uh, we'll see what the future holds. We will. Thank you so much, Michael.